let's talk about tuning a guitar using science because I pretty much do everything using science because science works. And the next time you're up on, uh, you're in the audience and somebody is up on stage like messing around with their tuning and like in between the song and they're screwing up the strings that are already in tune and, and you're like, God, would they just stop talking and play some music for me? You'll know that they're doing it wrong because they're listening to pitch instead of the beats between the notes. So there's this interesting thing about human ear and the way that science works. If two notes are close to each other, then alternately they cancel out each other and reinforce each other so their magnitude, the, the amplitude fluctuates, and your ear hears that as a note going kind of wow, 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 wow. And this is something pretty cool because it allows you to tune. So a little bit of science. There's a lot of cool math and coincidences in music. Um, every octave doubles in pitch, and then they're divided into these logarithmically spaced 12 semitone divisions. And um, these are all of the notes in, a, in one octave. Um, but those notes are not pure. In other words, a note that's supposed to be at 440 is not just 440. It has overtones, which are multiples of the bass frequency. And when notes have uh, ratios between each other, they sound simple and good to our ears. And that's because those overtones are almost coinciding with each other. They don't quite coincide because math and science and 12th root of 2 and things like that, but they almost coincide. And you can use those almost coincidences and listen to those overtones if you train your ear, and then you can tune your guitar or any other instrument. So these are some of the notes on the guitar, and you'll notice that, for example, 660 in yellow is almost the same as 659.26 in yellow. And that's exactly the, the kinds of relationships that make it possible to tune guitars. You can't possibly absorb this line in 15 seconds, but if you ever care about it for the future, for reference, this is what I'm about to show you how to do. Um, so we're going to listen to some of those overtones and uh, see if we can tune a guitar. So the first thing I'm going to do in this awesome demo is pull out my tuning fork, because I'm not going to use an app. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to this tuning fork in my head, and what I'm going to hear in my head sounds like this. 440 cycles a second. And then I'm also going to listen to the overtones in the A string on this guitar. And I'm going to hear the beat. He's close enough. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so I'm here all night. Um, so I just tuned the A string. And then I'm just going to ignore the slides and go ahead because there's plenty of time for this. Then I'm going to just strike the open strings. They sound awful. And what I'm really listening to is the overtones here. You can hear them if you listen. I'm not going to do this because that's awkward, but, but that's what you're listening to when you just strike the open strings. And this is the interval here is a fourth, and fourths are slightly wide because math and science. So I'm going to tune it one beat every three seconds wide, more or less. Good enough for a demo. And then the same thing with the D string. slightly wide, and G string. Don't worry that I'm getting behind. <laughs> Can you hear those beats? I don't know if that's easy for you. And then we have a third to throw a wrench into the works, and thirds are very wide because math. So I need about eight, string, uh, eight, eight beats wide. And then final fourth. And for this, I'm so far off that I don't know. When you really screw up the tuning, sometimes it's a little harder. And there we go. And that'll, that'll pass most tests. <laughs>